Lucy Nicotine is a company founded by Caltech scientists and former smokers looking for a better and cleaner nicotine alternative. Finally, tobacco alternatives that don't suck. Researched and developed for three years to be made for people, not patients. Lucy has created a nicotine gum with four milligrams of nicotine that comes in three flavors, wintergreen, cinnamon, and pomegranate. Lucy also has a lozenge with four milligrams of nicotine in cherry ice flavor. Each and every flavor actually tastes great and it's convenient and discreet. Products can be enjoyed anywhere on flights, at work, on the go, or even in the gym. I am so happy that Lucy is sponsoring us. Ever since they came on board, I have gotten no less than five of my friends transitioned over to Lucy and put their cigarettes down. They like the gum. I'm used to seeing the packages all around. This stuff is great, and it's really helping people make much healthier choices. So get on board and join the Lucy movement. Hey, it's 2021. Get rid of your cigarettes, unplug your vape, throw out your dip, and get some Lucy nicotine gum or lozenges. This is the real deal. A subscription to Lucy comes directly to your door each month. It's so simple that you don't even have to leave your house because Lucy has delivery down. Reality NSFW listeners, go to lucy.co and use promo code SURVIVOR to get 20% off all products, including gum or lozenges. That's lucy.co and use promo code SURVIVOR at checkout. Also, I have to give this disclaimer. Warning, this product contains nicotine derived from tobacco. Nicotine is an addictive chemical. That's lucy.co, and be sure to use that promo code SURVIVOR. This episode of Reality NSFW is sponsored by Blue Chew. Say it with us, Blue Chew. Blue Chew is making waves and bringing more confidence to the bedroom by offering chewable tablets that can help men get stronger and longer lasting erections. That's right, we're giving away super hard dicks. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra and Cialis, but in chewable form and at a fraction of the cost. Blue Chew's tablets help men achieve harder, stronger erections to combat all forms of ED. Blue Chew is an online prescription service, so no visits to the doctor offices, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And it ships right to your door in a discreet package. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. And the best part, it's all done online. BlueChew's licensed medical providers work with you to find the right ingredient and strength for your prescription. Don't like swallowing pills? No problem here. BlueChew's Sildenafil and Tadalafil tablets are chewable. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and they prepare and ship direct, so it's cheaper than a pharmacy. Hey, if you're looking to give that immunity idol to someone or you don't want to be voted out of a crater, don't worry. Blue Chew's got you covered. So if you could benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use promo code SURVIVOR at checkout. Just pay $5 shipping. That's Blue Chew, B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W dot com, promo code SURVIVOR to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. We're all trying to eat better, but healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but without all the bad stuff. And it's amazing as a midnight snack right before bed. Zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. That's only 140 calories per serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. And build your own box. Available flavors to build your very own custom bundle are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and my favorite, maple waffle. Now, Magic Spoon recently brought back their two super popular flavors, cookies and cream and maple waffle. Thank goodness. But they're back permanently. And when these flavors were first introduced for a limited time, they sold out extremely quickly. 
Now, I'm here to let you know you can get them again or try them for the first time. Why? Because they're delicious and indulgent. Johnny, Magic Spoon has so many Johnny great Magic flavors so that I really enjoy, and even my really kids enjoy, enjoy them. We have the cocoa, fruity yeah, frosted, cocoa, peanut fruit butter, frosted, all these are really great combinations. Really great combinations. Um, they enjoy waking up in the morning and getting some Magic Spoon right, right off to start their day great before they head off to school. I think everybody listening should give Magic Spoon a try, or if you've tried them already, it's time to reorder. Let's get you some more Magic Spoon and get your day started right. Hey, when I finish a podcast late at night, the first thing I'm thinking is not sleep. It's Let me grab a delicious bowl of Magic Spoon before I go to bed. So go to magicspoon.com forward slash survivor to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code survivor at checkout to save $5 off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. Remember to get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash survivor and use the code survivor to save $5 off. Thank you, Magic Spoon, for sponsoring this podcast. All right. Hello, Rita. Hi. So happy that you joined me here today. Thank you so, so much for having me. Thank God for this blessing. It really, really is a wonderful, wonderful thing. So I really, really appreciate yeah. it. Oh, good. Well, um, I'm so happy you also, I see you changed your name on here. I love to see when people change their name to either what they are known for on Survivor or a nickname. Um, it makes it fun. So thank you for the, um, so yes. how are you today? Well, I am just thrilled. Like I said, thrilled and so grateful to be on here. And yes, I didn't quite change my name. I just kind of added something that I uh, think of if you saw my season, uh, you might have seen that promo where again I applaud like oh so so much applauses for the editors of Survivor uh, a lot of you may not know that I work also on television as a tv host producer and so I know how hard it is to edit mm -hmm. and so I for one wasn't hurt hurt I just thought I would embrace uh the editing on that promo in particular where I was sharing with you off uh, earlier today mm -hmm that the lip gloss thing is because I actually was saying, I was talking to Michelle, we were having some downtime of which we have a lot of during yeah. the game. That was one of the things that I was told uh, to expect that there would be a ridiculous amount of downtime. So during one of those moments, Michelle and I were bonding um, and we were talking about how she's actually was studying fashion. And of course, she, I guess she knew about my background uh, in modeling. And uh, she knew that I had been a, a former Miss Venezuela. So I told her, yeah, you know, it's so funny yeah. because even though that is my genre of work, um, when I'm on TV or acting or in front of cameras, the only time that you'll see me wearing makeup. Otherwise I look pretty much, if you see me walking around in my daily life, I look pretty much like I look when I'm on here on Survivor with barely to no makeup. And at most, mm -hmm. I said, I wear a little mascara and a little lip gloss. Ta -da! And <laughs> there it was, the word, the word that they needed to <laughs> brilliantly. And so one fine day that week, the promo, I'm walking through my living room mm -hmm. and all of a sudden I hear lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss. <laughs> like, Holy crap, so that sounds like me. And I'm like, Oh dear, it is me. Um, <laughs> and it was that moment, like I said, they brilliantly took that one word and they superimposed it over mm -hmm. and over and over. Uh, not only that, not only did they superimpose it, but they close they did a close up. So all you saw were my lips. All you wow. saw were my lips pronouncing lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss, lip gloss in in you know in surround sound, so mm -hmm. to speak. So that's where the lip gloss word came out and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to embrace it because number one, I said it. Yeah. And number two, I love me some lip gloss as, as is <laughs> evidence here today. So <laughs> there you have it. And that's why you see on the screen lip gloss Rita. So 
yeah, kisses, lip gloss kisses to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love, I love your energy too. This is, um, this is really awesome. So I'm really happy that you're here. So usually how I like to start this is talking a little bit about pregame. I know there's just a lot that the fans or viewers in general don't know a lot about pregame or kind of what happens when you get a call, when you go to the island or just casting in general. So I was wondering if you had any stories to share from that experience. I actually, um, I do, I think like all of us, I do have stories to share about that. Um, Pre-game, don't know how far, depends on how far, how far back you want to go. Oh, whatever um, you want. Uh, well, I know that for me, the, the earliest pre-game is, I guess, when they do what is known as like the kidnapping, where they have us in a <laughs> hotel for a couple of weeks. They oh, yes. See, the double tree hotel. Um, and they have us there. And I think that that's where they're brilliant about trying to prepare us from the second we step into the survivor world and the survivor world. Isn't just when you're finally on the Island, mm -hmm. but I really commend the producers. They really try to do that from the second they bring you on board. So what I mean by that is from that moment, we were already put into an isolation of sorts. Wow. We were not allowed to talk to anybody, and I mean anybody, at the hotel. No guests, no staff. And, wow. and they told us, you'll pretty much look around and you'll notice who among the group is probably the candidates that we're taking a look at as possible mm -hmm. uh, survivors. The ones that are here, you guys are the top finalists, um, but you're not the final, final ones yet because they hadn't you know, picked or, or given us an official uh, pick. But so, you know, that the purpose of that was obviously we're all type A personalities and, so, <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and they do like to get people that are communicators. As you can see, I am a communicator. I am a talker. Um, <laughs> but interestingly enough, and I really adore Jeff Probst, although I will tell you a little background story on him where I didn't think he adored me. And I was very mm. shocked actually when he described me so oh. uh, in such a flattering manner. Uh, ironically enough, he described me as the ear and as the listener of my tribe. So oh. that's something that, yes, I, I did try to do. And in my line of work as a TV host and like this yeah. interview and you do need to be able to talk, but you also very importantly need to learn and know how to listen. Mm -hmm. So Thank you, Jeff, for noticing that, yes, I, I do try to be a good listener as well. But anyhow, um, during those weeks, during those couple of weeks, you know, that that um, desire, I guess, innate desire and ability and talent of most type A people to talk was immediately put to the test because we were on what you call a gag order. We couldn't talk mm -hmm. to absolutely anybody outside our hotel room. And so, wow. uh, and that was one of the, one of the requisites that if people, if they saw any of these candidates talking, they were going to be eliminated. So that was an interesting, you know, introduction. And then, um, for my group in particular, I don't know if people know the backstory on uh, survivor Fiji, the, the OG survivor Fiji, um, which is that. It had been on air already for 14 seasons, or it was about to be the 14th season, or at mm -hmm. least what I was told by production uh, when I was approached uh, to to with their wanting to cast me on that season. And I will also then share the backstory of how I was cast mm -hmm. uh, and why, because they were they had realized that you know it had been on air already for 13 seasons, so a lot of people, most people had heard of it, most people know and knew of Survivor. But by that time, not everybody was still watching it. Um, everybody, everybody was watching it the first maybe one, two, three seasons. And after mm -hmm. that, you know, logically, it, people had, had dropped off. So um, they also had noticed that the people that were participating past those seasons had gotten really good at it. They, they figured out the game. They figured mm -hmm. out the process yes. of the game. And so it had started for viewership, even as the producers, it started becoming boring and predictable mm -hmm. to watch. Yeah. So they were like, you know what? We're going to try and recreate the first survivor. And by that, how we're going to do that is we're going to go out 
and try to find people that those people who've heard of it, but have never seen it because oh. it's it been on for almost, for almost 14 seasons. So yeah. There, there were a ton. So exhibit A and <laughs> everybody in my, in my cast, except for one, if I'm not mistaken, Papa Smurf, but for the rest of us, and I'll tell you his, his backstory a little bit there too. Most of us, that was our story. Why we were for, for also for different stereotypes, you know, so to mm -hmm. speak, that we fit the, it, it is at the end of the day, a show. It is yep. reality. 100%. It is reality, but it is a show and every show has a cast. And the survivor cast tends to have, from what I'm told, Mark puts out a list of, of types. And I happened on that season. That's why, folks, when God has a plan for you and it's meant for you and nobody else, and there's mm -hmm. nothing you or anybody can do to take that the plan that God has for you away from you. Yeah. Because that was my case. I there was nothing I could do to change that that was the plan for that year. That was happening in that year. In my year was when that whole um when that whole cougar uh, um, stereotype came out. Yep. Yep. <laughs> That's when it started. I was it was 2007. I was almost 40 at the time. And I was using my experience as a former Miss Venezuela. I was using that to coach mm -hmm. girls. I was the official coach for the Miss USA California pageant. Oh, and wow. I still coach girls for, for uh, a variety of different pageants. I, I still do that. Wow. And I was doing that at the time. And the group that we had together, the director of the Miss California pageant, had a group of people. My specialty is I coach girls on stage presence and I mm -hmm. develop their self-esteem to give them that mm -hmm. self-esteem that they need to be on that mm -hmm. stage and to win that crown. And so of course I have my techniques to do that. And also I have to incorporate, and I, I might, another one of my strengths from my participation in the Miss Venezuela pageant is a runway walk. Mm -hmm. Miss Venezuela's were known for precisely that stage presence and our runway walk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was doing that. I was coaching my, my girl and she was a teen, Miss Teen California. And the rest of the group of people were arriving because the next training after mine, after me that day was to coach them on the, how their interview process is. Uh, okay. So what he would do, the director of the pageant, uh, Mr. Keith Lewis who was amazing. Keith gathered a group of mock judges and so these mock judges were, you know, waiting for me to finish my session, but they were, they had to by force watch me do my thing because yeah, we all in the same room. Well, I very flattered and, and again, had no idea God was putting his hand in and working his plan for me at that moment, because unbeknownst to me, after the, the fact, I'm trying to keep it a punchline because it's pretty, it's a good punchline. Um, we, you know, after all is said and done, everyone is leaving and except for one girl who was also a very close friend of the director of the pageant and she wanted to stay and kind of pour her heart out to him about some guy trouble she was having. Oh, wow. The director was hilarious. He and I were also really close. I was staying with him because I lived at the time in Texas. And so I was staying with him in California for the week to do the training for the girls. Yeah. And so, but he's hilarious. He is gay. And so he was like, you know what, honey, I do not have any interest in listening to any heterosexual love stories. So you're <laughs> kind of stuck with her. I'm going to make dinner for you ladies. And you can listen to her and have her talk her heart out to you. Cause I have no interest in heterosexual love stories. So, <laughs> so I mean, it's crazy how all these elements though. So that happens. And she yeah. and are talking we totally click. It turns out that her boyfriend, this girl's boyfriend was Greek, which hi, I'm half Greek. So it was like, wow. Oh. I mean, talk about when God wants to make something happen to you for you and to you, he will put yeah. an element. Cause I'm like, what are the chances of that? So we click, but all this time we were talking about either beauty pageant or a boyfriend. Okay. The next mm -hmm. day I get an email from her and it says, you know what, honey, I am putting you on Survivor. And I'm like, what the heck? First of all, I thought you liked me. I was aiming more 
at like America's Next Top Model. To try to <laughs> these beauty queens that someone yep. as old as I was, you know, uh, you know, so an older lady can also put herself out there modeling. And if I can do it, there's no excuse why you ladies can't do it. She was like, yeah, I know. But the thing is, you know, you don't, you didn't know I'm the casting, one of the casting directors for Survivor. And I'm like, what? Yeah, too, but no, I didn't know that. <laughs> so it was Erica Shane. Wow. Who spotted me. And, and then interestingly enough, my personal backstory uh, to why I mentioned why when God has a plan, in my case, it wasn't, it was more than a plan. In my case, it was an answer to a prayer. I, at the time, was also going through my, a divorce. Wow. And uh, it was a lot happening, not just a divorce, but I just moved to a new city. We had, I'd been living in Mexico City for 10 years mm -hmm. at the time uh, with, my, with my children and my then husband. And we had recently, within this last six months at the time, relocated to San Antonio. So here I am in a city where I know no one, I have no one, but this man that I'm about to divorce. And, um, and I was very um, scared because I was now having to revamp my career because I lived in another country for 10 years, which wasn't my country. And I was raising, you know, I, I really gave birth to and then raised my two kids. I had no one, I'm not, you know, if I have kids, it's to raise them. So I put my career and my and my you know my career aside to and traded it for the ever more important career of being a mother for those years when I was in Mexico City. But now I was finding myself I'm going to need my career back in mm. order to continue now in the second the, the, this next chapter of raising of my children. So I was scared because I'm like I have nothing I know no one I don't have my career what am I going to do Yeah, and and so I prayed to God. Um, I've always been faith filled. I'm actually named Rita is after Saint Santa Rita. Uh, and that's where my mother, I credit her for uh, not just naming me after Saint Rita, but telling me her story and brought me up with what Saint Rita represents, which is faith. She is the one who, who is constantly, constantly talking about the power of faith. Mm -hmm. And that's what my mother instilled in me through this name that, that she gave me. Uh, and thank God, because I prayed and I prayed for, interestingly enough, my prayer was, God, I just want you to give me the strength that I need to get through this next new chapter in my life. I, yeah. My will is broken. My faith is not. But I do need, you know, I do need to for you to send me the strength to show my kids that we're going to be OK, to reassure my kids through me that we're gonna be okay. And God is so wise and amazing and incredible that look, he answered my prayer and how. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Did you say you're uh, doubting if you're strong? Well, let me drop you on a little island. Right. And then you tell me that you're not strong. Mm -hmm. And that you, you don't have what it takes to get your children through this. And not only that, but Again, I, I can't overemphasize enough, and I think you can see my 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 passion and and I you know how deeply I believe it. He's so wise that mm -hmm. not only did he give me for me personally the 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 experience that I needed to reassure myself that I got this. It was more than it was more than just about surviving out there for me. For me, it was about yeah. what I needed to survive once I came back here. Yes, and. Not only did it do that for me, obviously, um, but more importantly, more, more, more important for any parent than for you, it's for what your kids. And I, he gave me a way because I don't care what you say. If you're if you're looking at and at the time I was looking at like a six year old and a, and a nine year old looking up at you and no matter you're sitting there telling him, oh, don't worry, kids, everything's going to be OK. You're going to be fine. Mommy's strong. She has this. Don't worry, honey. That they're like, what? What the heck does that mean? You know, <laughs> but but what God did was he gave me those words in their language, which is what do kids do when they're young? They play games and they win contests and they win games. Yeah. So in their language, he made it so that they could see in their language, their mommy playing games 
Again, yep. I remind you, they're challenges for us. They're called challenges for us on Survivor. But in my kids' eyes, they were seeing their mommy playing these games. They were seeing their mommy beyond playing their games. She, they were seeing their mommy run and fall down, but get back up mm. and keep running. They saw their mom get covered in mud. And did she stop? No, they saw their mommy wipe the mud off and keep going. There were things that, there was a moment where I broke the cartilage in my nose. There was wow. a moment where I sliced a part of my shin and, and I was given the opportunity to give up. And I said, no, I'm not giving up. Unless my mind breaks down or my body totally breaks down, you're gonna have to vote me off to get me out of here, but I'm not giving up and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not giving up. And so that was why I say it's so powerful how he answered my prayer because wow and how in all the levels mm -hmm. I needed, my kids got to see that strength. And then in the most incredible way, I've always encouraged uh, my kids to be physically active. And I'm so praise God again that both of them turned out to be athletes of sorts. My daughter is a big soccer championship. She's on on a soccer scholarship here at, at wow. University in Florida. My son is now working as a sports coach for uh, for uh, the the uh, Skyhawks uh, sports. Oh, cool! Yeah, um, a national organization that helps you know again develop children through sports. But so ever since they were little, I would intercept them when they would get home from school to stop and stay outside and play some kind of sports. And the, the sports of, of, you know, predilect was always basketball for the most part. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. interestingly enough, what does God do on one morning? We wake up in one of the challenges and I see that it's turning possibly might be a basketball challenge or no, wait, I, re I I'm, I'm fast forwarding. No, that morning movie. <laughs> So now I'm going to take you into the game and episode. All right, yeah, let's get right on in there. <laughs> yeah, so Mookie, see, see what I did there? See how you see that? I know how I work on TV. Transitions. Well. I just segued from pregame to in-game. So I love it. In the game, Mookie was, was feeling really down because we were, as you remember, very lethargic. Yeah, <laughs> I can imagine. Not, we could not cut a break. So we oh. were super lethargic. And um, Mookie was feeling really down. And so, again, I thank Jeff for describing me as a listener and I observe very much. That's why, for those of you listening now, you can see that a little bit of what we we're saying about Johnny not appearing in real life when he might have appeared on the show. Mm -hmm. You know, you can see that I'm, you started off by saying, oh my God, I love your energy. I'm very animated, I'm very energetic, I'm very much a communicator. You didn't see that Rita out there. Why? Because I was starving. I, <laughs> I had no energy. I had no, no, nothing to get this energy from, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, but I was, so I was using what I did have and I did have that ear to listen and I did have these arms to hug and, and that's what I tried to give my tribe. Yeah. Mookie was having that moment and I said, Mookie, you know, let's, why don't we do something? We have palm trees. We have coconuts. You know what? I play basketball all the time with my son, with my little boy. Let's just like play basketball with coconuts. And so we started like building with the palm trees, like, oh, that's so oops. and we started playing basketball to just, I wanted to cheer him up and keep him somewhat energetic. Well, unbelievable. A few hours later, you know, they drop the, the challenge message and we find it and it's, it leads us to believe that it might be, and it turned out to be that slip and slide that yeah. at the end of it was the basketball yes. challenge. Well, you know, again, now back to say, going back to how powerful the, the prayer that got answered for me to give me a visual to show my kids that, that mommy had this divorce thing and that we were going to be okay is mm -hmm. unbelievable that he put into what my children were going to see a basketball challenge. Yeah. And awesome. so you should have seen when it played back and I'm sitting next to my son oh. and I knew what was coming up and I knew that it was going to hopefully, well, the first thing my son said was, Oh my God, mommy, it's a basketball. I hope you didn't embarrass me. <laughs> <laughs> 
I said, well, let's just watch. So I'm off running and uh, and thankfully, thank God, I made my basket. Yay. <laughs> Sarah, I, to this day, it moves me. Uh, it brings tears to my eyes because you should have seen the look just the look on my son's face at that moment was worth the million dollars for me. The look on his face was like of the winner that his mom was just from having made that basket on that oh. that God was so wise to put in there for me to reassure my kids. And again, and here we are, fast forward, we made it. We so made it. I've got those two kids that I'm telling you about are now two. That boy went on to graduate with honors from UTSA wow. and now is holding this wonderful job with the Skyhawks Academy. My daughter went on to get, again, both of them went on a combination of academic and sports mm -hmm. uh, and athletic scholarships. Cassia got one to Rutgers, a, a soccer Oh, nice. Scholarship full ride uh, to Rutgers University, and then consequently now at FNU University, also again on an athletics scholarship. So thanks to, in large part, I, I give thanks to my participation on Survivor, gave me the strength to have this outcome. But now I thank you for giving me this platform yeah. to share with everybody how powerful, and, and, and I also want to applaud and, and extend uh, through everyone, my gratitude to Erica Shea and to Lynn Spillman, to Mark Burnett, to Jeff Probst, to all of those producers for seeing that survivor in me. And to Erica in particular, because she told me this experience, trust me, is going to be life changing for mm -hmm. you. And, and she was right. Not only was it life changing for me, but it allowed my, me to change my children's life for the better for all of us. And it continues. The fact that I'm on here with you today is yeah. that it's the gift mm -hmm. that I'm giving. Well, and that's the thing too, is survivor in general, it's, it's life-changing for anybody. You have this, it's, I don't, and I don't think viewers really realize what you all really truly go through. Go through. Oh, no. And you know, they just see, you know, a short amount of time that you're actually on the Island. You're on the, like you said, you have so much free time. There's so much happening. So you were saying how, tired and lethargic you were on that island like what was yeah. that like just being in I'm a so place where you probably felt so weak? well I'm so glad you bring that up several things um first of all you you don't realize until that reality starts to set in of like of that hunger so mm -hmm. it's it sets in a lot quicker I I want to tell you it sits in a lot quicker and and I and I want to say thank you to all the fans that have been so wise in my case to kind of see through that and see like, you know, we know Rita is more animated than this. We know she's, we, they have never once criticized me for like, oh my That's God, we thought amazing. you were boring. Why didn't you talk more? Why didn't, I'm the one. So the, the mind after the game for me was me. I was the one beating myself up for why could I be more me? Why could I have been more mm. animated? Why could I have been more funny like I am and silly and goofy and all those, you know, entertaining <laughs> things that I normally am? Why, why, why? And it was the fans, believe it or not, coming to my rescue to to reassure me saying, because you were starving. We understand. Wow. That's we awesome. Man, would they never once have have down me the the producers interestingly enough i had i had a difficult thing where i felt i let down the producers for another reason i'll share that with you okay. um i'm still i have my one of my i call it ptsd but it's called post-traumatic survivor disorder i joke <laughs> around about it one of them is i always have to have water very nearby <laughs> yep you're not the first person i've heard that from <laughs> we all need to, to hydrate yeah. And it, it's interesting. I, I like that little term because now I'm going to use that for sure, because I really do. And um, when I was talking yeah, with that's uh, Lex, what I call it. like Lex, for example, like he talked about, I mean, he was in like oh, the very early that. season. So it was yes. such a different time, but talking about how difficult it is to all of a sudden just be a star, but also 
how do you handle all of that? And also coming home. And I know he had a lot of struggles that he talked about on here and it's amazing what people go through that. It's yeah, um, it's a lot of stuff. One of my struggles again was, was that perception of like, I know I'm so much more entertaining than that. At one point, Jeff also said I was going to be the breakout star of my season because he saw that in my personality prior to the show. But did, you know, he didn't know, I didn't know I was going to end up on the no, on the have nots. And I was going to end up with no way to have any energy to be me um, yeah. out there. But one of the other things is, again, I mentioned that I was cast. One of the main reasons I was cast is because of that cougar thing. Oh, yes, you did um, mention that. They really expected me and wanted me to play up that what they saw. And this is what's interesting. You know, yes, I am. Thankfully, I have very healthy self-esteem. I try, especially as a mother, I mm -hmm. most definitely try to, to be that example for both of my children to be comfortable and proud of the skin that they're in. Um, but I'm, I'm a healthy proud. I'm not a arrogant proud of the skin that I'm in. Mm -hmm. So I'm Makes very sense. grateful. I'd be lying to you if I told you that I wasn't like beyond flattered that they thought I would look like a cougar, that I, they thought I looked <laughs> younger and that people, you know, people are very kind and they still think I look so much younger than my age. Of course, I'm like, you know, ridiculously flattered. But, but on the other hand, I, that's not, I, I, again, I'm not, I don't have the arrogance to be like, you know, hell yeah, I'm hot and I eat, you know, 20 year olds a lot. It, it's, that's not me that I knew that wasn't my personality. Mm -hmm. So I was really, really struggling while out there. Like, how do I, you know, how do I make the producers proud? And, and this is who they see in me, but yet this isn't it, who I am. Mm -hmm. um, but then I'm not going to lie, you know, I, there were some not just good looking, but they were really nice uh, of, the, <laughs> of the companions that I had on the island of my colleagues. But, you know, is at one point I told them in one of the testimonials that didn't get aired. I remember they asked me about like, who would I, you know, would I plan to hook up with anybody? And I was like, well, mm -hmm. listen, I don't know if you've taken a look at my tribe, but you pretty much left all the possibilities for hookups on on moto so who the heck am i supposed to hook up with like yeah <laughs> I, mean, I love you yeah man but first of all I'm married <laughs> and no you know so it made it really hard for me also yeah. and, and and i i wish that the producers kind of sympathized more and saw gosh rita really didn't have like boo edgardo alex there right? i'm like i'm good i'm i could be considered a cougar because i'm an older woman i was almost 40 at the time and i'm good that way i guess but i'm not that good that i can hook up with someone when they're on a whole completely different island right i mean that's <laughs> difficult yeah and i remember <laughs> saying those kinds of testimonials that i'm upset you know were funny entertaining and i'm upset they didn't they didn't air they didn't get to see all that was also happening on the island, that whole yeah. dynamic of the cougar thing that was happening. And now, interestingly enough, I actually did use it to my advantage because I, when I saw where I landed, mm -hmm. I, I approached Mookie and Mookie was very grateful and, and respectful that I made a choice at that point. I said, you know what, Mookie, I just wanna clear up because in the first days that we were all in a group together, um, Edgardo and Boo had been floating around with me quite a bit. And again, mm -hmm. I couldn't be more flattered. They're, they're gorgeous guys and they're <laughs> wonderful. They've turned into wonderful, wonderful, uh, brothers of lifetime brothers for me. But at the time in, you know, in those first days, you don't, you don't know these people. So you're, and, and again, we're out there and we're also observing the way you're watching us on TV. That, uh, that was our TV. We're watching each other there. Yeah. And so when I get into the group that I'm in, I, I made the choice to clarify with Mookie. I said, you know what? I want to clarify with you. I'm not going to play that hookup. Try to try to seduce the young guy thing. Mm -hmm. It's I'm not going to play that. Make that choice. I respect you too much to think you're stupid enough to fall for it. Um, and I'd rather use my energy, you know, together with you in other mm -hmm. ways to try to move forward. And he's like, you know what? I really, I, it, at least that was one instance where, and he kept his word to that. He's like, I, I respect your honesty, which is something uh, unfortunately in survivor, a lot of people might not do. But in that moment, Mookie's like, you know what? I really respect your transparency and your being honest and, and that you won't, 
you know, try to play me for a fool that way. And that's when we you know, made our alliance uh, to mm-hmm. make it and use it in, in different ways and to like, oh, let's, let me try to hook up with Mookie and, and try to get him to stick with me that way. No. So interestingly enough, I did play it, but not in the way because I, you know, in, in, a, in this, like I just explained, I, I couldn't, they were all over yonder, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, right. And with one person, you don't know how much strength that one person might be able to give you. So I thought yes. well, I think it's smarter to give him other ways to be strong in an alliance. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, so that was, that was definitely a struggle. And also keeping in mind that like, I'm not, uh, it's not, first of all, it's not me. Mm-hmm. I'm, I am, I'm not going to be out here making out. I, I think my children's um, speaking of mental health, their mental health and emotional well being is worth more to me than a million dollars. And I felt that me, I knew, and first of all, I, again, I clarify, that's not me to be hooking up with, you know, a plethora of people. Uh, and I, and then also that choice that I'm like, you know, imagine what that would do to a child. Like, oh my gosh, he's, they're out there watching their mom just getting together. And, and then what you tell the kid, oh, it's just for the game. Well, guess what? When they go back to school and all their friends are watching this show and watching their mom, you know, kiss every Tom, Dick and Harry on the island, that's not what their eight year old, you know, six year old friends are going to be saying, oh, your mommy made some great choices out there. Good for her to try to win. Oh. No, they're going to say, your mom's a hoe. Oh, ha ha, la la, and that's the mom with the hoe on the show Survivor. And I, all that was going, a lot of people don't realize, all that was going through my mind, through my system, every single moment that I was out there. I you had to have my children up here you know, in mind. And you, you know, you might criticize saying, well, you know, if you love them, you do anything for them for a million dollars. I would have ended up having to use that million dollars on, you know, with all respect due to you on psychologists and psychiatrists to help them (laughs) regain their, their mental and emotional well-being. So would it, was it worth it? No. And that's why to this day, I still hang on to my last words when I left and I, and I said my last words on, on national TV that I felt very proud and that I was leaving the game with my head held high. Mm-hmm. And that I hope that, that anyone related to me in any way, shape or form also felt that, that pride. Yeah. And I think that's such an accurate statement. I think people don't always realize that this is kind of your legacy here um, and what the world's going to see. So what anybody says you're making decisions based in this game, based on so many factors, not just a game, but like you said, I think it was pre, before we started recording, you said, that's your reality. Your reality is there on the island. You're not necessarily, you're thinking about the other stuff I'm imagining, but you're, that's your reality. That's where you are. You're there for so long. You don't have any outside communication. You're just there. Yeah. So- that's your real life. That's what people don't realize. I, I get some questions sometimes where like, what do you guys do? I'm sure all of us have gotten this question. What do you guys do when the commercials are on? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> wait, what? We're I'm not watching TV out there. What? Oh, There's no commercials for us. Yeah, right. But, You're not just out we, there for an hour. A we week. are. You're, yeah. you're, you're there for a lot longer. <laughs> Hello, we are yeah. our commercials. Uh, right. You know which is why I tried to, you know, entertain with my stories here and there because we have no commercials. It's like fill up those hours. Right. Um, That's all you have to do. And it is. And it's, it is rough because uh, for example, they purposely it's structured that way. I believe it's structured that way to build up that paranoia. Um, It's structured so that of course, right after a challenge is usually then a a tribal council is going to come up, but they give you all day, you know, that tribal council doesn't take place until the sun goes down. Yeah. For all the reasons for, you know, for visual reasons, but also I believe for psychological reasons to give you all those hours to be ridiculously paranoid and, and, and freaked out. And, you know, it's 10 hours to those, those yeah. challenges, wow. those challenges take place at around seven in the morning. Is, is when you are the minute the minute the sun goes up, 
they're like, okay, get ready, let's go. And so you're back. You are back from your challenge by like 9.30 or so. I don't know exactly because obviously we don't have, we didn't have watches. I was actually going to ask you about that. No, the, yeah, there's, there is no watches. I think at one time, I, cause I wanted to see what time is it? I think I was able to catch a glimpse of one of the producers watches and saw it <laughs> in the morning when yeah. we were heading out. And that's why I'm calculating like, okay, if we head out every day about seven 30 in the morning, we must be heading back here by around nine 30, 10. Mm-hmm. So we're here from 10 in the morning until seven o'clock at night, Wow, which is when we got, and I figured it was about seven because that it was when sun went down that we would go to tribal council mm-hmm. and it's all those hours to be sitting there, which also leads me to my next observation, which is, you know, a lot of people, at least viewer wise, you think that those challenges and they are, they're meant for you to get a chance to win nourishment. Yep. Yes. But I also very strongly believe, and I think you appreciate this. This is my observation. I think that they're built in there very wisely as a psychological tool to oh, help probably. to give us an outlet for that paranoia, for that anxiety, oh. to give us a place to release because mm. we go through all those hours and you have it pent in you. Where, where does it go? Well, guess what? The next day you have a chance to uh, let yeah. it out in those, in those physical challenges. That's my observation that I think that that was one very, very smart reason and and not just reason but um uh tool and purpose of those challenges is a cycle it's you know paradoxically there's a physical challenge but i think that the purpose of it paradoxically is more of a psychological purpose Mm, in those challenges interesting i could definitely see that because you're right you get all of this just in you and you you only have specific people you can talk to. And obviously there's probably things you're thinking that you're like, I can't tell any of this. And you're probably like, I need to get it out. You can do it in your, your confessionals. Um, but still that's like, there's no one talking really back at you. So you, you could really be like, talking. Shane. you could be like Shane and go and talk to a rock and, and you could and text your friends through on a rock. Yeah. I mean, on that's a, always a, on a blackberry, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, whatever works. And I, I just, and it's so interesting to me because I I've always been saying, and I, I think I've said this a couple of times in a couple of different podcasts now about how the worst part about season 41, I felt like has been the fans and the fans kind of being very harsh to players. And I mean, being in the community and seeing the comments and seeing what people say. And so I can only imagine if Shane now, how much hate he would have gotten for that. And, but I don't, people don't realize how much of, your mind is all over the place when it's you're playing a game like this. Place. It is like, I guess, you know, high school amplified times a hundred and you are going through in, in just a span of hours, you go through that roller coaster of like, you know, to give you an example, like you come back from a challenge, um, say you didn't feel you did, you know, uh, mm-hmm. necessarily what well, it, it happened actually to me, I guess on the day, that I, the night that I ended up getting voted off, mm-hmm. I observed it happening to Rocky. Mm-hmm. We get back from the challenge. I could see what was going on mentally with him. I'm observing him and I'm watching him freaking out and I'm watching him do the one thing that even as a non survivor, you know, expert at the time that I was, I, as I told you, we were all non survivor watchers. We had no yeah. experience on survivor. Um, but even as a non-survivor by that time, after the days went by, because I am proud. I made it far enough to be really yeah. proud of myself. Halfway through is a good run. You know, I'm like, wow, 15 days, hours, that's, that's almost halfway through the game. Yeah. I'm very proud. That's a good run. And very, wow, almost like uh, prophetically that morning, I said those words to Michelle. Um, I said to her, wow, dude, can you believe um, and I was super safe that morning. I was like, great, I'm still here and I'm going, I'm, I'm moving forward here. Um, and she and I were talking and I said, God, Michelle, can you believe we've already done? I mean, it's, it's today's day 15. Like we've already done multiply by two a day. We've already done about 24 physical challenges. That is a ton. And Michelle's like, wow, dude. That's a, that's a lot. We've done a lot. I was like, yeah. And I told her, I'm really proud. Like even for, you know, mm-hmm. God forbid, but if for some reason it would 
be my time to go to. I, I feel like, wow, I played this game. I got to do <laughs> a lot. Yeah. I didn't know I was fucking prophesying my my demise that <laughs> no. so at it kind of ironically and I ended up getting voted off that night. So anyhow, that day transpires, we go to the challenge mm-hmm. and Aki is he blew he's the one who blew that challenge for us. And he did the one thing that I, at that point again, I'm halfway through the game, so I know well enough, do yeah. not draw attention, especially on Ravu. Part of our strat, part of the Ravu strategy, and as you know, the first half is about mm-hmm. your team. Yep. Um, it's the second half that becomes the inter- individual challenges, and at least for that at, at that juncture of the seasons. And so we were still. It's all about Ravu and the team, and the way that our team was voting people off was who was messing up our chance at winning food. Whoever messed mm-hmm. up our challenge is the person we voted off. That was our strategy. It was never personal. It was always like, all right, who lost the challenge? Bye bye. Because because of you, we didn't mm-hmm. eat today. And that at that point, Rocky was the one who the reason we lost the challenge. Yeah. So um, he comes back to camp and the first thing he says is draws attention to himself by saying, Oh my God, I can't believe I blew that challenge. I lost that mm-hmm. challenge. It's my fault. And I'm like, oh man, you don't do that. You just do not draw attention to yourself when you're. And I, and then at that moment, I think he realized, and that's when he started. And I could see it. And that process, yeah. that paranoia, is what we go through after every challenge, because before every, in all those hours before every tribal council, I could see it playing out in him. I'd see him running around, and and that's when I then I started getting paranoid because I'm thinking, mm. what is he? making up to try and save himself now right what is he gonna say and he came up with this ridiculous thing about like i was talking about pineapples or something which i never (laughs) did but good for him he made up what he needed to make up to convince the other people uh to to vote me off i also went on my end uh and that's what i'm talking about this emotional roller coaster so then i go on my end and I feel like I've reassured, I, I strategized. It was uh, what, what really, really saddens me is that that was the point when I finally started really on, on a strategy level, started playing the game of Survivor strategically because before that I was playing it social, the social game. Mm-hmm. But at that day was when I was like, okay, when I noticed him doing that, I don't know if it's my God voice that talked to me and said, I don't know, but something's making me feel like he might be talking about you. Mm. So, but that's how we all feel. You all, yeah. you, you all get paranoid during, you, you, you all think that they're talking about you. Uh, exactly. For tribal council. But anyhow, so I did my due diligence. I called Michelle over, reassured that my, my alliance with her, and we were tight, tight, tight. She's like, dude, you know, I'm ride or die. What do we do? And so I told her, I think we need to bring Anthony with us. Because as you can see, Michelle, we're the last two Mohican uh, in the female tribe. Yeah. And so we need to start playing the guy's game here. And I think Mm -hmm. the person that we can bring over to us is Anthony because he's been so weak for our tribe. And we can use that to our advantage. And I can convince him remind him and so that's what i did i brought him over i was like anthony you know who's been making you look like a fool this whole time who's been calling you abroad and all these horrible things rocky so i'm just saying i don't think you should stick to the boys club at this point and i'll tell you why because we're halfway through the game tomorrow is when we probably merge and i have got all the guys all the latin guys and then some are on team rita because i because of the cougar thing in the first half, <laughs> I, it, yeah. in the first days, it, and the Latin, more than the cougar thing, it was a Latin thing. Remember, we had been divided or yes. into these ethnic tribes, and I'll, yes. I'll talk about a little bit of that pregame and what happened there. But we, I had Edgardo, I had, I had already an alliance waiting for me on Moto. I had Edgardo, I had Alex. So imagine, I already had Michelle. Mm. I yeah. Had, I had a pre-alliance also with Boo. So I already had a majority of an alliance waiting for me on the other side. So I told Anthony, I said, look, I've got all these people. 
plus you, you are already in a majority alliance if you stick with me and Michelle. I can yeah. guarantee you that Edgardo and Boo and Alex will do what I what I tell them with this alliance, especially if they know that you saved me. Because think about it, Anthony. The first half, we've been a team and you have not fared well in the team challenge. Mm. Next half, we're going individual. And then I told him, I said, you know, I am... I, I, I was I was playing the strategy game there by telling him, you know, mm. you have a better chance of beating if you move forward in a physical challenge, me or Rocky. I mean, I think guy to guy, you probably would feel like you have a better chance of beating me, even though I felt personally that that wasn't the case because I've always yeah. been physically fit and had already proved that I was doing better physically than than Anthony up to that point. Yeah. Way. But I was, you know, strategizing. I was you, you're doing what you could. Yeah, and I and so I told him, and I also have Yao Man. Mm -hmm. I also have Yao Man. So and Yao Man told me, I already talked to Yao Man, and Yao Man told me, if you come on board with me, he will drop his guy vote and he will stay on our lines because he also knows that I've got all those Latin guys and and Boo on the mm -hmm. other side. Well, yeah, that was I, the strategy I put out there. Unfortunately, the men's. As, as it tends to be a men's world out here, it played out in my season of, of Survivor. Yeah, and it and he stuck with the men vote. But sure enough, when I saw him the very next, you know, a couple of days later, coming into Ponderosa, I was like, "I told you so." If you had stuck with me, you and I both would probably be still out there. But you stuck That's with wild. Rocky, and who voted you off today, Anthony? Rocky. So I know. And that's the thing. It's so hard to really know truly what's going on while you're there because you really don't know what's happening. You know what's happening, but you don't know what's happening at the same time. And people you can be don't so know. And and back to the the starvation because you asked about it how yes. it, how it affects you. So one challenge where it affected me and it affected, I think, definitely affected my outcome. I would have uh, mm -hmm. gone much for much further and and hopefully possibly maybe won um, when I made the choice to vote for Earl because that was also strategic because I had observed early on, in my opinion, it was a combination of two things. I, I had observed that I, I felt he was a stronger player than people than anyone else had noticed. And I was trying to give my tribe a hint to like, watch out for Earl. You guys are not watching out he's doing the under the radar thing and he's gonna get you if you don't listen to me and nobody listened to you know at least while we were out there playing and moving along and communicating so i thought the only way i can send my tribe a strong message is by if they see his name written down it'll wake them up to smell the coffee like oh shit man yeah. keep an eye on earl that was my strategy there my other reason for putting his name down was because at that point my two numbers were uh, my numbers, my alliances were Sylvia and Anthony mm -hmm. and and Michelle and Mookie. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not going to put down a Anthony or, or Sylvia yeah. and vote off my, my alliances. No. And that's who everybody yeah, wanted to vote for. Right. And that's why I'm like, no, I'm not going to give away my numbers. I'm not putting down Sylvia. I'm not putting down Anthony. Mm -hmm. So I went with Earl. And uh, and I was honest. That was my, my mistake. One of the mistakes is... You know, I was, and I, and I felt, and I hope because Mookie uh, was very appreciative and really, really respected my honesty and didn't use it against me. So I thought that was working <laughs> naively <laughs> enough. And so I was honest with Earl and I didn't know it. it. It, you know, it pissed him off to no end because I didn't know he had this plan. Like you just said, you don't know what other, what people are thinking. Like my mother always says, every mind is a world of its own. I had no very idea that Earl had in his mind wanted to be this perfect slate of his name never ever been written down people later you know poked fun at it saying well then i guess you don't want to win because they have to write your name down to win but he he was referring to obviously during the game yes but here is where how being lethargic and how having um being malnourished and your mind not getting the electrolytes and the nutrients mm -hmm. affected me so on the way back, and I don't feel bad about this at all because I honestly, honestly do not, I, I never thought of this. If I had thought of it and not done it, then I would feel bad. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, it does. I, my mind was 
so depleted. My body was so depleted. Sarah, I didn't even think of this. And it would have been brilliant. I think it would have possibly oh. earned me an invite to, to come back and play again. Oh. My mother, when we were watching the playback, she says to me, Mi amor, why when Earl or whoever it was that asked you who you wrote down, you could have just told them that you wrote down Sylvia because mm -hmm. she had already been voted off. There was no way they could have verified with her. Oh. Yeah. Could have had a V8, but I didn't. <laughs> didn't have even a coconut. Nothing. So, <laughs> so I was like, oh, wow, mom. Oh, no. Brilliant. Brilliant. That, can you imagine? I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Duh. But you know what, mommy? I don't feel bad because I did not that didn't even think mm -hmm. of that that's that's yep. how depleted so I hope that all the fans that are listening start to hopefully respect admire support my game even more knowing those yeah. realities that's how do we were for Ravu we were sucking on rocks some days to get some <sighs> Yes, not not just that, but the, there were these beautiful visually. They're oyster rocks. They're completely okay. covered in oysters, and um, we were smart enough. Some of us were smart enough to keep some of the nails from the first couple mm -hmm. of days when we were building our mm -hmm. shelter. So we we figured out, and this is the beauty of going through an experience like Survivor, how you figure out ways to survive. And one yeah. of them figured out like we had already tried opening the oysters to, to, you know, to get the flesh yeah. out. And we realized that we were, we would crush that the shells are very um, fragile and they would crush and then we would ruin the flesh and we wouldn't, we would ruin it. We couldn't eat it. So we yeah. figured out, well, if we just poked a hole in it, we can suck the flesh. Oh, okay. And that's what, so then you would see us there on the, on the rocks sucking on the <laughs> I, that's odd. that's funny you know you get you get desperate you just you you just do what you gotta do you know it cleanliness everything out the window you just do what is right at the time and can help you get to the next point so but so I kind of want to jump into a little bit of like that after game piece mm -hmm. so you you're starving you talked a little bit about the water how was it coming home from being on this experience um, it is, it is a bit of a, you know, shock to come back to civilization, oh, um, because you are so, um, permeated with that. You're, you're, you know, straight off the, the game, you're still there. Your whole, your mind, even though your body's not there, your psyche, your mind is still there. And so for, you know, for many months, um, your thoughts are, you're just going over, especially those first two months. I have to say that it's amplified, um, after, after you see the, what they put out there, yeah. then a lot of, of what you're, again, we go back to the fear of the unknown. Mm -hmm. For me, it was more of now I start going to the fear of the unknown. I, I, before getting on the Island, it was the fear of the unknown of what it's like, what it's going to be like to be on, to do survivor, to be on the Island. Mm -hmm. Then after I'm off, then it was the fear of the unknown. What are they going to show? What, yeah. you know, what, what's going to happen? Because you don't even remember like, wow, mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff you're like, you don't even remember what you said or did or didn't do or, you know, yeah. So, so on and, and so forth. Um, um, I remember I had a downtime one moment where Earl and I were trying to bond and he was talking to me about who I believe who later became his wife, his current, his wife. And I was sharing with him about a gentleman that I had started dating. And then after it, after I got off the show, I was like, oh man, did I talk about this person? I hope I didn't. Oh God, I hope they don't show that. I don't want, because I was no longer. <laughs> oh, know, 
Yeah. Mm, awkward. Maybe not a bad thing. I was everyone yeah. knew I was a divorced and, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, single mom, so to speak. So that wasn't the bad one. But in my end, I was like, oh God, I hope I just didn't want that this this might sound bad, but I just didn't want him to to give him importance in my life. I, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. I him on that. So I was like, ah. So something as little as that, all those thoughts are going in your head. It, all the while, in the meantime, at least for me, physically, your body is still, you know, recovering from that mm -hmm. starvation. In my case, being on Survivor did a and ultimately a good number, but in the beginning, it feels like a bad number on my intestines. Oh, my, I <laughs> you know, my intestinal bacteria was like all over the place, and it was so bad that it got to a point where I was having, I was starting to have, and I, and I didn't know where they were coming from. I thought, then I thought, what, wow, is this like from the experience on survivor? Mm -hmm. Is this trauma? And what is going on? It turned out to be that the bacterial imbalance was so extreme. I started having like anxiety attacks because, oh, wow. of, and it turned out to be because of that imbalance mm -hmm. and very ironically, you know, what saved me coconut oil. Uh, what <laughs> the last thing I wow. wanted to see again in my whole life was the remedy when I kept reading on it saying coconut oil will kill the bad bacteria and keep the good bacteria coconut oil and oregano oil and it will restore. wow and as soon as that happened ah, I would have never known that back to back to balance and and life um <laughs> as far as the attention for me, it was really a positive thing. I, I guess I grew up because I had had the experience in the Miss Venezuela pageant. I, I was already in that public yep. entertainment world and the TV world, the modeling world. And um, so a huge part of me, I think, was already used to that attention mm -hmm. and had already, I, I credit my faith once again. Um, mm -hmm. I always use that to, I always recognize that as a blessing I yeah. always recognize that as, you know, I think that's, this is a gift that God gives me. It's a privilege for me to have mm -hmm. to work on television and film and, and do this. And so I want to give it back to him and have him use. And to this day, I say that I want to use my voice. And anytime I'm on in front of a camera, I want to use that and have God use me to help others in any, on any level. I hope like today, I hope any of what I might've said, hopefully if, if just one tiny bit of it helped someone that's always uh, my prayer and so that's what I continued yeah. to do as far as, as the attention and the celebrity that it might have brought me I always say that you know I'm not I'm not the celebrity I, I, I would be lying to you though again back to the any attention I'm tremendously honestly sincerely human the human in me so yep. flattered so so flattered <laughs> I love it I love it I'd be lying if I told you I didn't but <laughs> But I see it more as like, you know what? I'm just so blessed that that Survivor, the you know, Survivor, right? Survivor is such a huge celebrity. Yeah. That I get to, mm -hmm. I get that people get to think that I'm a celebrity because, but it's really, you know, thanks to Mark Burnett and, and the whole franchise and mm -hmm. Jeff Probst and everybody involved. I, I can't, you know, thank them and name them over and over again. Lynn. Erica, everyone who, who made that possible is continuing to make it possible. Mm -hmm. Those are the people that that the, the survivor is the is the celebrity. And thank thank you that through them um, that we get seen as celebrities. So for me, I just took that and continue to take that to give that celebrity name of survivor to pair it up with charities, organizations, people yes. might need that voice through me to help them. So mm. I, uh, I think that I handled this celebrity in a really healthy way that way and placed it again. I just kind of said, gave it back to God saying, thank you for giving it to me and now use it for what you need uh, to use it for. And so I still, I welcome uh, charities, organizations. And I, and one of the ways that I get to do it is again, through my line of work, I, I get to MC. Uh, people will come up and, you know, charities don't have the money to pay an MC. Uh, but they want someone that might bring help to them. Yeah. And that's where I come in. And I'm so grateful that they continue to approach me. Hey, do you mind if we say that Rita from Survivor is emceeing the event and I volunteer and I, and whatever mm -hmm. amount they were going to pay me to emcee the event, I donate 
uh, back to that charity and I tell them keep that amount and I will I volunteer to do your show and you and use that public image to hopefully help you raise more money or, or attention or whatever uh, it needs. My, my top charities that I always champion are uh, anything cancer related, breast cancer. I lost several friends to my daddy died of lung cancer, um, animals. I'm a huge, huge uh, pet animal lover and also uh, disabilities. I'm also very big on inclusion and, and doing charity work and foundation work. And, and you all, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to do a real shameless plug here. Please, 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 because it will help me continue to help all those people and anyone out there who, who wants to reach out to me to, to do uh, work for their charities. On my Instagram is the one where I'm, I'm strongest, uh, most active, which is basically my name. It's uh, at Rita Varios. Um, I have to spell that because I didn't put the Varios on the screen. It sounds like Cheerios with a V. As my, as my <laughs> brother always says, Varios, V as in Victor, E R R E O S as in Sam TV. Rita Varios TV at Instagram. Please, please follow me mainly to, to, you know, so you can see what I'm all about and what I'm supporting. And if you're a part of that too, then we can, you know, together be stronger and help even more people. Yes. And I, that's one thing I, I love to see. I see a lot of, survivor players be really into donations and charities and it's a really cool thing to see and then with hearts of reality yes too, um with that it's i'm pretty jealous i wish i went to that event this past year uh, maybe not. i'll go next time maybe you, yeah you don't you know the good news is it's it'll be there god willing next year and mm -hmm. and you should definitely go you would absolutely oh, absolutely love fun. it and yes i do thank you for bringing that up um, that is, you know, the gift, as I told you earlier, survivor has been the gift that keeps on giving to me and my family on so many levels. And that's one of the levels that it's, it gives on a, uh, you know, international level to so many charities. And that's something that survivor needs to be applauded, uh, tremendously for it gave us all mm -hmm. the, those platforms. They have, we have raised millions and millions uh, to help other people and all thanks to Survivor. Yes, it's it's honestly amazing. So it's not just a show, there's so much more to it and it gives yeah. people this great experience, but it also brings a lot of people together. There's yeah. a really big Survivor community and some of the best people I've met have been in the Survivor community and it's- um, it's Well, you share really with me, I hope you don't mind my sharing with um, your listeners and viewers that Go ahead. Uh, speaking of the Survivor community, you had something happen to you that I had happen to me with Cindy. Um, you know, the, I forget what she, I think she was on Guatemala. So you said that, you know, you were passing through and that Johnny Fairplay opened his doors to you. Mm -hmm. And that's thanks to that's, that's how we are. We really are a family. If you love us, we sincerely love you and open our doors to you. And I'm so glad that you shared that with me and with, and, and allow me to share that with everyone that, you know, <laughs> Johnny was like, what you need help. And he helped you. Uh, I had that happen to me. I'd never met Cindy. I needed somewhere to stay when I was uh, coming down from, uh, from um, St. Petersburg, Florida down to Miami. And she, you know, I sent out a message to our survivor community. Is anyone along that route can i stay with you and and cindy i'd never met her before she's like hey rita it's rita it's cindy from Guatemala. survivor yeah i live in naples yeah you're more than welcome to come stay with me that's amazing and i had an amazing uh couple days with her she lives at the time she lives at a beautiful speaking of loving animals she lived on a rescue horse farm and you know because she worked at a zoo she worked at the naples zoo mm -hmm. and so i got to see her at, at her job at work and it's just oh. wonderful we are we are definitely there for each other within the survivor uh, world we really call each other brothers and sisters earl um sylvia cassandra anthony alex were at my wedding oh um, we really are whenever we can come out to be there with each other and for each other, we most definitely are. It is a, because the experience as you were hearing today and hearing from other people mm -hmm. on Survivor, it is a life altering and a bonding for life experience. It's a blessing yes. that I'm so grateful for. 
Oh, well, I'm so glad that you were able to talk about all this and come here today and be able to talk about your experience. It means the world to me that you said yes to me and came here. So thank you so much. Thank you. I am as I started off by uh, expressing my gratitude and I'm going to end the same way. I just want to thank God for you and, and this platform that you're giving us all and, and thank him again for this blessing of uh, getting to participate on this iconic, the most the most iconic a reality show on television and it's you know it's going to continue to live in history and i'm so so grateful oh and blessed and i just want to give another special thanks to all all of you that are watching and continue to watch and reach out and show your support i hope i can see you show up on my instagram so we can connect there and continue to support each other uh and so i can thank you on there as well. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being so loving, so kind, so respectful, so understanding to me throughout the years. Mwah. Los amo, besitos y bendiciones. That means I love you, kisses and blessings. Well, thank you, Rita. And I hope that you have a fantastic rest of your day and everything goes well for you. Thank you so much. Right back at you. I wish you a very, very a 2022 filled with continuous blessings for you and, yes. and your hubby. Your hubby's going to need to get back to, with my hubby to help us with our Wi-Fi, by the way. <laughs> All right. Good to know. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll end this here. Thank you so much and have a great day. Thank you. You too. Right, thank you. Bye, Sarah. Bye, Rita. Ciao. And for more reality NSFW content, visit ad-free nsfw.com.